The Joker has a bunch of crazy plots, but what if I told you that the Joker made his own clone, basically, and then that clone thought he was the Joker, and then what would happen if we didn't know who the real Joker is? That's the story of Joker, the man who stopped laughing. We're going to explore that mystery together in today's full story. Gotham City, four days ago. The mobsters sit around the table laughing and telling jokes. The boss looks into his soup and is shocked to find a human ear. What the hell? He shouts as he throws the bowl away. He gets up, shouting for his men. The door swings open, and one of his bodyguards comes stumbling out, blood pouring out of his throat. The mobsters rush into the kitchen, where they find Joker's goons killing their men while Joker cooks. You, you, you're back. <laughs> I do seem to be. How was the soup? Two days ago, the Joker stood before the members of Gotham's underworld. Low-rank crime bosses he had captured were tied to the chairs. He laughed, turning to Two-Face, Black Mask, and the Riddler. He explained to them that Gotham had gone soft, that the crazies needed to up their game again. I know if we play hard and give it our all, Gotham could go all the way again. Who's with me? <laughs> He asks as he pours a vial of acid down one of the boss's throats. His face split in a massive smile. That's it? Two-Face asks. The three costumed criminals flanked by their goons. You've been gone a long time and frankly, most of us didn't much like you when you were around. So now you come back, you kill a few two-bit hoods, and you expect us all to be in line behind you? Joker winks at him. Kinda. Yeah. <laughs> But the three criminals refuse, pointing out that Joker doesn't have any more friends left in Gotham. And they all raise their weapons. Look at us! An old-fashioned standoff, so tense! If we're not careful, this could go all sideways. Joker says as he pulls out a massive revolver and he fires it. But water shoots out. You've convinced me! It's time to move on! Set my sights on bigger and better things! The Joker says with a shrug, walking out of the room. But it's Black Mask who speaks up and points out that there's one tied up mobster that he didn't kill. Hey Joker, what about this guy? Black Mask asks. Joker turns, pulling out a real pistol. Oh yeah, silly me! He says firing into the hooded man's head. We now go to the present. A couple of goons are burying the bodies that Joker killed, but the last hooded man suddenly begins to cough. They both drop the body, jumping back, shocked that he somehow survived. Should we, uh, call somebody? One of the goons asks. And say what? The guy the boss killed isn't dead? No, we gotta finish this. The other one tells him. They begin to argue back and forth who actually is going to kill the man. The dead man stumbles to his feet and hits one of them with a rock, killing him before he falls to the ground. He then whirls around on the other goon. No, please! The goon gasps as he staggers away. The hooded man standing over him, rock still clutched in his hand. Across the country, the Joker stands in an office of one of the biggest crime bosses in Los Angeles. The boss holds up his cigar, thanking the Joker for taking the time to come see him and asks him for permission to set up shop in his city while the Joker eats a cup of noodles. Let me make this simple for you. Los Angeles isn't Gotham. We don't have a bat or any other rodent in our business because we're respectable here. Joker puts down his soup and he smiles. I uh, think there's been a little bit of a misunderstanding. <laughs> he leaps across the desk as his clown goons quickly take down the crime boss's bodyguards. I don't want your territory or your permission. He says, grabbing the crime boss and throwing him against the window, cracking the glass with impact. Please, I'll give you anything that you want. The Joker merely smiles, slamming him into the glass, letting him fall towards the pavement below. I want your office! And with that, the Joker looks out across the city. It has a lovely view! <laughs> he takes a seat behind the new desk, ordering his men to set up the cameras. They begin to roll, and Joker's image interrupts broadcasts around the country. His Joker goons begin to cause mayhem and violence everywhere, and he appears before the viewers telling them that the country has lost its way. I hereby declare that I'm going to clean up this country once and for all. I want everyone to learn to laugh again. 
And we can't do that if we're all scared and angry and afraid of each other. I want every city to be a safe place where your children can play. Except Gotham. I don't give a crap about them. A new era is upon us. A safer, more secure, funnier era. The broadcast continues and the likes of Lex Luthor, Harley Quinn, and Jason Todd all see it. All having mixed reactions. Meanwhile, the hooded man from before stumbles his way across the streets of Gotham, finally making his way to a bar. He barely notices the Joker on the television as he stumbles into the bathroom. Someone's in here, man! The junkie says in the corner, but the hooded man isn't listening. He staggers to the mirror. The junkie stands up. He pulls a knife. You freaks think you own this place, but I was born here, man! You don't own Gotham! This is my town! He says, and the hooded man whirls on him. No! It's mine! He growls, rushing forward, grabbing the junkie by the face, slamming him into the tile floor. He picks up the junkie's fallen knife, turning back to the mirror, beginning to cut the hood that is stuck to his face from the blood. He finally rips it free, revealing that it's the Joker beneath it. Everyone gasps in surprise as the Joker staggers back into the bar. What does a guy gotta do to get a drink around here? The Joker says with a smile. Gotham City, 10.06 p.m. The subway rolls along with the crowds avoiding the sleeping homeless man laying on a bench. But two thugs step forward, beginning to rifle through his pockets. They quickly discover that it's the Joker, as he reveals his face to them and they run in fear. 8.42 p.m., Jason Todd steps into a bar, the one that the Joker left. The owner is grumbling as he cleans up the blood in his bathroom. It's all in my statement to you guys. You're a cop, aren't you? Not exactly, Jason tells him. 10.26 p.m., the Joker has made his way to one of his old hideouts, but the doors are chained shut. He turns to a guy leaning against the wall nearby, smoking a cigarette in the snow. Excuse me, kind sir. I was just wondering if you knew what happened to this building. It didn't used to be locked like this. The Joker says innocently, still hiding in the large coat and hood. Nuona, the guy grumbles, and the goon looks up, seeing the Joker's face. Before he can fully react, though, he calls his friend over, and the friend tells him that Joker left Gotham days ago. That this has got to be just some whack job stalker. I'm just going to go, Joker says, but they pull their guns on him. You're not going anywhere. Whoever the hell you are, the Riddler's going to want to talk to you. But the Joker moves fast, stabbing one of them in the side, twisting his gun off of his hand, shooting the others. The doctor would say all oh, this extra aggravation is not good for my blood pressure. If he wasn't dead. <laughs> the last goon tries to run away in the snow and the Joker lifts the pistol. I just wanted to be left alone. Tell your boss not to come looking for me. And the goon rushes off into the night. As he turns back, one of the goons is still alive. If you're the real one, who's the other guy? Joker shrugs, shooting him in the head. I don't know, but I'm going to find out. 10.32 p.m., the cops are questioning the two thugs that tried to rob the Joker in the subway. Red Hood's listening. 11.19 p.m., the home of Mr. Cardiff, once a loyal henchman of Joker, steps through the door, shocked to find his window broken and the Joker sitting in the easy chair. Back over in the other Joker's location, he's admiring the fish in a tank in the home that they've invaded, with his men asking if there isn't something that they should be doing. We are doing something. We're laying low. The Joker tells them, reminding them that he wants the country to believe that he is in Los Angeles. Well, according to some people, you're in Gotham, boss. What are you talking about? Joker demands, and the goon is scared as he explains that someone is in Gotham and he looks just like the Joker. Angrily, the Joker drowns the henchman in the fish tank. At 11.23 p.m. back in Gotham, the survivor from the Joker's last attack is trying to tell the Riddler goons about what happened, but they don't believe him. I told you it was the Joker! It's like all messed up! The goon says again, but the Riddler's goons shake their heads. I told you, bro was in California on TV taking credit for killing half the crime bosses over there! But they look up as Red Hood approaches. He disposes of the Riddler goons in seconds, grabbing the survivor, slamming him into a window. I want to know about the Joker. Start talking now! What did he want? I, I, I don't know! Do better! Cardiff! He was looking for some guy named Cardiff! 1.36 a.m., the Joker is knocking on the door of Harley's houseboat. She answers, her eyes widen in shock. Good evening, my dear. But Harley whirls on him, slamming him in the face with a bat. 11.52 p.m., Red Hood stood in the house of Cardiff, looking down at the body on the floor. 
He then headed back out into the city, continuing his hunt. Joker on the houseboat woke up tied to a chair and he smiles at Harley, telling her that he's happy to see her. She's looking at him questioning about the last time that they met. You were mad at me. I must admit my memories have been a bit off since I got shot in the head, Joker tells her. She finally sighs, beginning to untie him and he's shocked. You're letting me go? She smiles and brings him a cup of tea, pointing out how awful he looks. Meanwhile, Red Hood is continuing to beat his way through every thug and goon in the city until someone finally says something that he should have thought of in the first place. Ask his ex. Back with Joker, he's afraid that Harley is going to do something to him, that she might have poisoned his drink. But she laughs. I won't do anything to you. Want to know why? Because I don't even know you. She explains that he is merely some poor sap that the Joker probably drugged up and messed with. The real Joker would never come to see me, and if he did, he'd never walk out of here. Joker stumbles away from her, shocked by her words. As he reaches the window, he doesn't see a reflection, but instead sees the menacing face of Red Hood. The window shatters inward as Red Hood reaches out, grabbing him by the neck. Red Hood pulls back, ripping the Joker out of the houseboat, throwing him against the railing. Get out here, clown! Joker smiles at him. Oh, Jason! How oh, I missed you, my sweet boy! <laughs> Jason hits him again and again, and Harley sighs from her broken doorway. If you boys are gonna squabble, would you mind not sinking my yacht? But the Joker points out that it's a fairy. Jason whirls him around, tossing him back inside, destroying the table. Careful! I paid good money for that! Jason draws his gun, preparing to fire, but Harley stops him as he turns back to her. I am not getting blamed for your killing spree! Watch what you say to me here, Quinn! Jason growls as the Joker tries to sneak up behind him, raising a bust of Harley over his head, preparing to strike. Jason turns back, aiming the pistol. Oh, I thought you two were gonna keep talking. <laughs> he stumbles back outside, leaning against the railing as Jason steps forward, jamming the barrel of his pistol into the clown's mouth. Joker looks up and over Jason's shoulder, giggling. <laughs> what are you laughing about? Jason demands, and Joker motions over his shoulder. Are you really going to use that big bad gun of yours with Daddy watching from up there? He'll be mad! Jason turns quickly to confront Batman, then realizes he just got tricked. No one's there. That's my cue! Joker says, falling off the railing, plummeting into the icy waters below. Jason turns, firing into the water, and Harley joins him, staring down. Between the temperature of the water and the state that he's in, I don't think he's coming back up. Jason shakes his head and says that he needs to find him. Why does it matter? You want him if daddy's dead. And Jason glares at him. No, I wanted to kill him. Later, over at Gotham River, two homeless men are fishing, trying to catch themselves dinner, and they both react with shock as the Joker washes up on the shore. But he's still not dead. And his eyes snap open as he rolls over, puking water onto the shoreline. You need one of us to take you to the hospital? One of them asks, and Joker nods, smiling. Oh, that's not a bad idea. I think I was poisoned, you know. Say, that's a nice coat. He stares at the homeless people. Later at Gotham General Hospital, the Joker, now wearing the homeless man's clothes, has pushed his way through the emergency room and is managing to corner one of the doctors in a supply closet. You're the head doctor working right now, right? The doctor has already realized that something is wrong. You're just the man to help me. Joker removes his hood so the doctor can see his face. I think I might have died. <laughs> Joker says with a smile and the doctor tries to back up to get away. I was poisoned. <laughs> Joker tells him and the doctor asks him several questions about his symptoms. But when the Joker admits that he doesn't have any, the doctor informs him that he probably wasn't poisoned. So the Joker sighs. I'd love to leave now after your very thorough care, Doctor, but I'm afraid I swore to myself that I'd only disarm the bomb that I planted in the building after you cured me. And you didn't do anything. <laughs> You'd better get me some of that anti-poison pills or whatever you give to people. The Doctor is terrified now, giving Joker a bottle of pills that he quickly begins to swallow. No, no, please, disarm the bomb. The Doctor pleads, but the Joker shakes his head. I still got a wicked headache. The doctor motions to the wound on the Joker's head, pointing out that that might be what's causing the headache. Oh, this? It's just a gunshot! <laughs> he begins to strip down, showing the doctor everywhere that he's been shot recently. After the Joker agrees to let everyone in the hospital go if the doctor helps, he begins to bandage up the doctor's wounds. 
Afterward, the doctor informs Joker that he needs to treat the head wound. I believe the bullet is still in there. Joker agrees, demanding the doctor remove it, despite them not having the proper equipment or anesthesia. The Joker just laughs, handing the doctor some nearby tools. Moments later, the emergency room is filled with screams from the supply closet as the head nurse comes running over. Hello? Dr. Amiko? Is that you? Is everything okay in there? The doctor responds, telling her that everything is fine. Go back to your station. And the Joker chimes in. Oh, and definitely don't you tell anyone that there's a bomb in the hospital! <laughs> Joker shouts as blood is pouring out of his wounds. Across town, Red Hood has been stopped by some cops, but he quickly takes them down, leaving them in the snow, and he begins to walk away when their radio squawks. All units, we have a 1079 at Mercy General. SWAT and bomb squad are en route, the radio says. At the hospital, everyone is scared as the nurses and doctors try to evacuate. But one of the doctors is hiding his face as he attempts to go outside. But he stops as a gathering of police begin to surround. Oh, good. <laughs> the Joker steps out and one of the police officers shouts at him. Hey doc, come over here. But the Joker pulls out his surgical mask, walking back inside. No, thank you. He brushes past the nurses and everyone else in the building. He quickly slips through the hospital until he slips out another door, stopping short as he comes face to face with a ward of sick children. Hello, sick children, he says with a little wave. Outside, Red Hood has created a distraction by starting a little car fire. While the cops rush over to see what's going on, he slips into the hospital. Upstairs, the Joker's cracking some inappropriate jokes, making the kids laugh despite themselves. But he hears the cops approaching and he slips behind the door, putting a finger to his lips for the kids to be quiet. Nobody moves, the cop shouts as he bursts through the door, but he stops short when he sees the kids. Uh, have any of you guys seen a real creepy guy come this way? Pale skin, green hair, gross mouth. He looks like a nightmare clown, the cop says. But the kids shake their heads. No one's been by here for hours. Can you change my sheets? I made a mess. One of the kids says from his hospital bed. The cop shakes his head, heading out the door, and the Joker laughs as he steps out of the shadows. Who's a good boy? Yes, you are! The sheet was very clever. The Joker finally slips out of the room, heading off, but this time he finds one of the cops taking a leak in the bathroom. Moments later, Joker's now wearing that cop's outfit, and as he heads to the elevator to make his inevitable escape, he's shocked when he sees the red hood standing there. Stop! Jason shouts as the Joker turns to run. Jason raises his pistol to fire at the retreating man, but the Joker rounds a corner, tripping over a bed. He wraps himself up in a sheet as the other officers rush over. Pal, you okay? He's coming this way! Joker warns them, and Jason rounds the corner into the SWAT officer, raising his pistol. Move away from him! Now! He tries to convince the cop that it's the Joker, but the cop shakes his head, aiming his rifle. Son, you are out of your damn mind. Lower the weapon. The SWAT officer orders, but the Joker is up, holding Powell's pistol to the man's head. I hate to say it, but the little bad baby was right. You should have let him kill me. Now drop your gun. Joker hiss, and Jason shifts, trying to get a clear line of sight of the Joker. Nobody go, Joker! Whole building is crawling with cops, let him go. Joker smiles, reaching for Powell's radio. This is Powell! Joker has fled the building at the back! I'm in pursuit, but need backup. That should buy us some time. Now, what's your problem with me, Jason? You killed me! Jason shouts, but the Joker shrugs. You came back, say la vie! <laughs> Jason finally demands to know how the Joker did it. You're gonna have to be more specific. Jason takes another step forward. You've got the whole world believing that you're off in LA, but here you are doing this. And Joker smiles broader. So you believe that I'm really me? I knew I always liked you. <laughs> Jason sighs, finally lowering his weapon. And Joker nods, kicking the cop forward, pushing them both into a supply closet. So if he's not working for you, who is he? Joker doesn't answer, and he merely bids him farewell. Wait, aren't you going to try to kill me? But Joker just looks at him. Maybe I'm not because I have a plan for you. Or maybe I just don't like telling the same joke twice. He says as he closes the door. Upper West Side of Gotham. Several young kids are searching for their friend as the snow begins to fall out of the sky. They walk inside one of the neighborhood haunted houses to find their friend standing quietly in the entrance hall. Ricardo, you know the old clown house is off limits, it's haunted! One of the kids whispers, but Ricardo isn't listening. 
He's staring at Jarvis Tech, the Mad Hatter, walking down the stairs. When you send your friend to roam in and invade my home, I am forced, of course, to teach you a lesson in dispossession. Jarvis smiles. But before the Mad Hatter can act, a window shatters inward to reveal the Joker with a makeshift cape and baseball bat. Hello, evil doer. It's me, Batman, he says with a smile. Jarvis tries to run, but the Joker cracks him across the face, glancing back at the kids. Don't you kids run off yet! Don't think that I'm done with you! I'll only be a moment, Joker tells them. Joker stands over Jarvis, hitting him with his bat, demanding to know why the Mad Hatter is in one of his old safe houses. Jarvis looks at the Joker with terror, explaining that the other one gave him a key. The Joker! The real Joker! He gasps, and a smile breaks across his face. He's back in Gotham too, and he's not happy with you, Jarvis tells him. Elsewhere in town, Jason Todd is still tracking down the Joker, but now he learns that the other Joker, the one who went to LA, has returned as well. On the south side, Joker has followed Mad Hatter's instructions, heading into the old warehouse. Hello! Anyone in here? He says with a giggle. A little man in a big hat told me that you were here, and he seemed very reliable. He calls out, but the cage suddenly slams down around him, and Joker 2 turns smiling, shining his flashlight into the shadows as a voice calls out to him. So glad that you could join me. I've been meaning to speak to you as well. You've been causing quite a problem for me, so I was hoping that we could talk face to face. The real Joker, Joker 1, steps out, dressed in the purple suit, the one that he wore when he left for LA. I must say, you do look just like me. How did you do it? He says with a smile, and the two Jokers stand before each other, looking each other up and down. The wounded Joker 2 suggests that they fight it out, but Joker 1 shakes his head. He then suddenly turns, aware of the smell of smoke. Oh, that? I lit the building on fire before I came in here, Joker 2 says with glee. He pulls out a water pistol from his pocket, and Joker 1 heads for the door. You're forgetting one simple thing. You can't leave. But the doors are locked from the outside, and neither Joker is leaving the building. We burn together, Joker says with laughter. <laughs> Nearby Red Hood has tracked both Jokers to this area as the snow begins to fall and a voice calls out to him. Watch your step, kid. Stephanie calls out with her best Batman voice and Jason whirls around pointing his pistol right at her but holsters it when he recognizes her. She hands him coffee informing him that Batman wants him brought in but Stephanie is trying to warn him so that Jason can just leave town. Meanwhile, Joker 1, LA Joker, rushes back to the cage, pulling out a pistol and aiming it at Joker 2. I was supposed to find out who you really are and why you're doing this, but I don't even care. Give me the keys or I'm going to shoot you now. He snaps at him, but Joker 2 smiles. I've actually come here to find out who you were and why you're pretending to be me, but this... This is much more fun. <laughs> he laughs as he aims the water pistol firing and a spray of acid shoots out, striking Joker 1 in the face. Just because they're called water pistols doesn't mean you can't put other liquids in them. Joker 1 scrambles away, smashing through one of the boarded up windows, plummeting to the city below. And Joker 2 stares at him for a moment before spraying acid on the cage's lock. Huh, I didn't expect that. I guess I should be leaving too he says to himself. And on the nearby rooftop, Jason finishes the coffee that Stephanie gave him and throws it to the ground. You don't understand, I have to finish this. The Joker, I have to stop him for good, he tells her. And he asks her to give him the night and then he'll leave. But they're both interrupted as they look up to see the warehouse in the distance burning. At the warehouse, the fire department has now arrived, unaware of the Joker as he walks outside. He finds an open sewer grate and follows Joker 1 inside of it. I know you're in here, my fake little friend. But a voice grunts from the dark. I didn't sign up for this. The fake Joker groans, and Joker smiles, shaking his head, shining his flashlight at the wounded man. What did you think was going to happen? Light falls upon Joker 1, the Joker from LA, 
And Joker 2, the man who had the bullet removed from his head, can see the acid burns. Oh wow, that looks horrible. He then aims the water pistol, but he suddenly pauses. Wait, what do you mean you didn't sign up for this? But the conversation is interrupted by a gunshot. As Joker 1, the one who was here originally, the one who left for LA, his head explodes. And above them, Red Hood is leaning down with a smoking pistol in his hand. The cops suddenly surround him, and in the sewers, Joker 2 turns to run. But a subway train suddenly rolls by, knocking him away. Up above, the police have Jason on the ground, and they're handcuffing him. I, I, I really, I really did it. He whispers to himself in disbelief, but the cops can't find the Joker's body below. Just a pile of wet clay. Sometime later, we see the Joker is still in L.A. He's actually moved to Malibu, but a phone call comes in. Clayface is on the other end. Your little impersonator sprayed me in the face with acid. I want the rest of my money, Joker. Joker doesn't respond, hanging up the phone and turning to his henchman. It's like I always say, if you want something done right, don't hire an escaped mental patient made out of mud to do it. Pack the bags, Mr. Waffles. We're going back to Gotham to deal with my imposter myself. <laughs> Back in Los Angeles, the Joker smiles as he aims the van through Griffith Park. I think you're going the wrong way, boss! Mr. Waffles calls out from the back seat, but the Joker tells him that he needs to make a quick stomp. They point out that he might miss his flight, but the Joker shakes his head. It's my plane! I think they'll wait for me! This will be fast! Don't worry so much! The Joker tells his henchman, ignoring the growling coming out of the back seat. They finally pull into a park with the rest of the henchmen pulling up behind them, confused as to why they've stopped. But the Joker points out that they never got to enjoy any of the nature while they were here in California, and he opens up the back of the van, allowing three wildcats to leap free and attack his henchmen. There are trees in Gotham, but no nature! Take it in, boys! <laughs> Joker shouts with glee as the henchmen begin to wrestle the cats. Twenty minutes later, the Joker and his surviving men find themselves at the observatory with Mr. Waffles once again pointing out that they really need to get to the airport, but the Joker pulls them in. Shh, watch. Multiple explosions suddenly rip through the city in the distance. I love LA! Joker bellows as the fires erupt behind him. Joker smiles, pointing out that he took over the city's underworld in a matter of days and no one managed to stomp him. No one even tried to stop him. The city didn't respect me. They barely tried to stop me. So as a parting gift, I give them chaos. I blew up some police stations. <laughs> Mr. Waffles points out that getting to the airport is probably going to be harder now. Don't worry, we'll be in Burbank in 15 minutes. But Mr. Waffles stops him. But boss, your plane is in LAX. Joker whirls on him with freedom in his eyes. LAX? What have you done to me? Over in Gotham City, Jason is told that he might not be staying for very long as an officer comes over to his cell. It's your lucky day, smart guy. That clown you confessed to killing, turns out he ain't so dead yet. But he will be when the LAPD find him. Back over in LA, Joker and his men are driving through the city, which is now engulfed in violent riots. This city starts to get fun right as I'm trying to leave. Mr. Waffles tries to get through the throngs of people and he stops opening the car door, firing his weapon into the air. But the rioters rush forward, pulling him out. Oh, that's not so bright. <laughs> the Joker laughs as he watches. He gets out ordering the people to stop since he needs to get to the airport. Get back to Gotham, clown! Someone shouts as they throw a firebomb at him and the Joker dodges as the bomb explodes in his car, lighting the rest of his men on fire. The riots continue and the Joker gets out to observe everything. Yes, yes, this is where all the excitement is. He shouts with glee and then he joins in firing his pistol, smacking everyone who even gets close to him. But Mr. Waffles crawls back over to him. No boss, you gotta go. He shouts, trying to get the Joker moving. Meanwhile, beneath the streets of Gotham, the creature known as Solomon Grundy leans over the body of the Joker that was struck by the train. Sick man must eat. Grundy keep you alive. He rumbles as he squeezes the blood of the dead rat into Joker 2's mouth. Meanwhile, Joker 1 is still running through the streets of Hollywood, shocked that everyone here seems so calm when the rest of the city has erupted into violence. He suddenly whirls around when Batman appears behind him. You shouldn't have come here, clown. 
You're in my area. Everything else east of Vine is mine. Even those drunk bastards Freddy and Jason know that. He says, and Joker seems confused as Batman offers to work together and charge for group photos. A family comes over and asks them to get a photo. Joker is more confused as everyone starts posing around him. This pretend Batman then pretends to punch him for the photo, but the Joker just smiles, raising his pistol. How is this? He says, firing, and he laughs as everyone begins to run around and scream. As the people begin to scatter, Joker leans down, pulling some cash off of the fake Batman. Now to get a taxi, he says with a smile, and he turns it just in time to get smacked in the face by a staff member. Joker falls to the ground as a manhunter stands over him, her electro staff shoved at his chest. You should have never come to LA, Joker. That's what I keep saying, strange lady! He smiles back at her. It was 45 minutes earlier when Kate was sitting in an AA meeting. She was talking about how she had to give up her job because it would lead to drinking. But she was interrupted as the explosions at the police stations began to rip through the city. She quickly rushed outside, changing into her Manhunter costume, quickly working on hunting down the Joker. Now, he kicks up at her, knocking her away. I'm sorry if this is rude, but I don't know who you're supposed to be! He cackles as he gets to his feet. I'm your worst nightmare, clown! She growls as he cocks an eyebrow. My worst nightmare is being bored? He asks, and the two of them begin to fight as the civilians gather around them, taking pictures and filming, thinking that this is some sort of street performance. The Joker manages to stun Kate long enough to get away, allowing him to fire into several people. But everyone is still filming, and the Joker is confused as he turns his gun on them. How many people do I have to kill in the middle of the street before you people are afraid of me? He asks as he continues to fire at them. At this moment, the people of LA have finally gotten the message and begin to panic. Mantuncher jumps back in, swinging her staff again, knocking him away. You're gonna pay for this, Joker. It's over. Try anything funny and I'll put this through your damaged brain. But he smiles. My dear, I don't try funny things. I just do them. And he laughs as a cop car suddenly appears, slamming into Manhunter, knocking her away. The doors open, revealing Mr. Waffles, who stole the car and has been looking for the Joker. Took you long enough, move over, I'm driving, he says as he gets into the car. But back in Gotham, Jason is being moved to Blackgate since someone believes that he is a flight risk. Several SWAT members push him against the wall, handcuffing him, but Jason isn't phased. You seem pretty calm. You know we're gonna kill you in there, right, tough guy? The cops growl, and Jason shakes his head. No, but you're gonna try. Back over in LA, Manhunter finally wakes up. The citizens surround her, suggesting that she stay down until an ambulance can get to them. But she gets to her feet, demanding to know where the Joker went. Someone points her in the direction that the Joker left in his cop car, and Manhunter steals a motorcycle. Sorry, I need this. She shouts to the rider as she throws him to the ground and peels off into the night. Meanwhile, the Joker and his men are now stuck in traffic after stopping to get some hamburgers. The 710 is a parking lot at this time. That's why I said we should take the 110 to the 105, but you didn't listen, Mr. Waffles tells him, and Joker sighs, taking another bite of his hamburger. Well, I might have set one of the bombs on 110 for a gag, but they look in the rearview mirror to see Manhunter gaining on them. Wait, wait, is that the woman you hit with the car? Joker asks, and he begins to push the cop car through the traffic, trying to figure out why they haven't seen a single superhero for weeks, and suddenly there's one that won't leave them alone. Well, there's no superheroes in LA except for Manhunter, boss, Mr. Waffles tells him. Her name is Manhunter? Isn't that, like, sexist? Joker asks as he pushes the car onto the curb, and then he pushes through the traffic, scraping against the sides of other cars. He finally steers off the highway, slamming into the Los Angeles waterways. I'd like to see the person, Hunter. Follow us after that. He shouts with glee, but Manhunter revs her motorcycle, leaping off the bridge, slamming down into the waterway and following close behind. Wow, I really didn't think she'd do that. What did she do to make her so mad at you, Waffles? Meanwhile, back in Gotham City, Grundy is still trying to nurse Joker 2 back to life. He tries to struggle to his feet, but Grundy pushes him back down. Rest. Make you strong like Grundy. I don't think I'd like to be that strong. None of my suits will fit anymore, Joker whispers, and then he's shocked that Grundy is helping him, pointing out that they didn't get along very much in the past. But Grundy tells him that they are the same now. We are dead, he rumbles. 
Over in LA, Manhunter leaps off her bike, leaping onto the hood of the Joker's car. She slams her electro staff onto the hood, exploding it, sending the car careening into the air. Manhunter flips clear as the car crashes down, and Joker grits his teeth as he crawls free of the wreckage. This is crazy! Are you unwell? Who acts like this? I'm trying to leave your stupid city! Why won't you let me leave? He gasps. The Manhunter is there, kicking him in the face, grabbing him by the jacket, dragging him to the pool of water. Wait! Are you gonna drown me? You can't drown me in the LA River! It's only four inches deep! He shouts, but Manhunter isn't listening as she shoves his head under. Back over in Gotham, Grundy slumps down into the swirling sewer waters beneath him, and Joker looks on in shock before pulling his new undead best friend out of the water. Grundy rolls over, coughing it up. Who did this to you, Solly? Did you tell them where I was? Joker asks, but Grundy shakes his head, patting Joker, telling him that he would never tell the alligator man about his dead clown friend. Thank you, dead giant friend. Maybe I should have a word with alligator man. Joker whispers as Grundy continues to pat his head. Meanwhile, back at the LA River, Manhunter glares down as she continues to hold Joker 1's head under the water. This is the end, Joker! All the pain and suffering stops here, she snaps, and Joker manages to get his head above water. I'm sorry! Did you say something? I think I got water in my ears! He cackles as she pushes him back under. But Manhunter looks up as a couple of teens approach, distracting her. Joker manages to get above the water, stabbing her in the neck with a broken bottle that he found, and he cackles as he pulls himself free. Back over in Gotham, Killer Croc floats through his sewer home, but he's shocked to find a school of dead fish floating along. What the? He gasps, but Joker is behind him, pulling a cloth over his head, trying to strangle him. I didn't think you'd drink the water. I was hoping, but even you have limits. But I poisoned it just in case, Waylon. Can't be too careful, right? Joker asks, but Croc throws the wounded clown off of him. You're a dead man. I'm gonna take my time with this one. But when he looks around, Joker is suddenly gone. Back in LA, Joker is trying desperately to flag down a taxi, wanting to finally be free of the city. But he looks up as a manhunter rushes after him. Joker, we're not done yet! She shouts, and Joker looks at her with dismay. Aren't we? I guess I could stab you a couple more times if you really want, but I don't see the point! She swings at him with her electric staff, and Joker ducks underneath, trying to run. But Manhunter grabs him by the hair, beginning to slam his head into the glass of a car that screeches to a stop. Can we talk about this? Joker asks, each word punctuated by the glass breaking beneath him. Manhunter pulls him back, preparing to hit him again, but the Joker stops her. Wait, wait, let me ask you a question. What's big and yellow and has four wings and looks really dumb? But Manhunter isn't willing to play his game, and she really should have, because at that moment, Killer Moth suddenly flies out of the air, slamming into her, throwing her to the ground. Back over in Gotham, Killer Croc is stalking Joker 2 through the sewers, following his insane giggling. He leaves out of the water to attack the Joker, but is shocked to find a maintenance worker tied to a pole. Please, no, I have a family, the man says, explaining that the Joker grabbed him and forced him to wear his clothes. I was just trying to work in the gas lines, but I won't ever come back again, I swear, the line worker says, and Croc sniffs the air. Gas lines, he whispers. The Joker laughs from the shadows as he throws a match into the air, lighting the sewers on fire. Croc leaps back into the water, but finds himself captured in a net made of barbed wire. As he pulls himself back to the surface, he finds the Joker waiting for him. Funny, all the stuff people throw away that winds up down here, isn't it, Waylon? And the Joker laughs out loud with a board, cracking Croc across the head. But Croc just growls. I ain't like the rest of the wackos in Gotham. I've never been afraid of the real Joker, and a weak imposter like you ain't it. He rears back, taking a bite out of the Joker's arm, and the Joker shrieks, staggering away. I'm the real Joker. The other one is the fake. You'll see. He gasps before passing out and falling into the water. Back in LA, the Joker watches as Killer Moth and Manhunter continue to fight. I think I'm just gonna go, he says before standing up and starting to stagger away. This is your fight, get her off me, man! Killer Moth shouts and the Joker sighs, grabbing a nearby fleeing woman, pressing the gun to her head. Fine, okay, red lady, let the Mothman go or I kill this lady, Joker orders. Manhunter finally relents, demanding to know what the Joker wants. He tells her that he wants to leave. But Manhunter twists, leaping at him, and Joker has no choice but to release the woman and fire his weapon. Manhunter's staff stabs into his shoulder, pinning him to the concrete overpass. 
This is honestly insane behavior. I don't even know you. Why won't you let me leave? But Killer Moth is there again, slamming into Manhunter, knocking her off the overpass, letting her fall to the LA River below. Both villains stare at her and watch as she slams into the ground. Okay, that was intense. Who the hell is that, Joker? Joker just shrugs. I thought she was with you! <laughs> but as the Joker looks up, he sees that Killer Moth is now pointing the gun at him, pissed that he did what Joker asked in Gotham after pointing Red Hood to the imposter and was stabbed for his troubles. There isn't enough money in the world to get you out of this. I'll give you two million dollars, Joker says simply. Back over in Gotham, Red Hood is being led out of prison. His guards have prepared to transfer him to Blackgate Penitentiary, but he's interrupted by a blonde woman that wanders in off the street. The cops check her to make sure that she's okay and send her along her way. But Jason looks at her in surprise, sure that he's seen her before. As she leaves, Barbara Gordon pulls off the wig, radioing in all the details of the convoy to the Bat family, prepared to bust Red Hood out. And back in LA, Killer Moth finishes pulling Mr. Waffle's body out of the river, stuffing him into the car that they stole. Joker yawns next to him, closing his eyes. I need a nap after that. You take the first shift and Mr. Waffles can go second. Yeah, I think he's dead, Killer Moth points out. And Joker shrugs. Well then, you'll take second as well. Beneath the streets of Gotham, Killer Croc pokes his head out of the water, demanding that the fake Joker come out of hiding so that they can end this. I'm right here, Waylon! <laughs> Joker cackles. Croc looking up to see the Joker sitting on a beam, sparking live electrical wires curling around him. He leans down into Croc's face, unafraid, as the massive monster rears out of the water. Before you put me out of my misery, will you grant a poor clown his dying wish? Joker asks. Croc grunts with laughter, asking the Joker, What do you want? First, the Joker questions why Croc would hurt Grundy, as it's obvious that the undead creature isn't all there mentally. Why do you care? Is he your friend now? Croc grunts, but he does explain that Grundy was getting closer to the Croc's turf. Meanwhile, 240 miles away from Gotham, Joker steps out of a gas station with his arms loaded with candy and soft drinks as he walks up to Killer Moth, who's gassing up their car. You get my coffee? Joker shakes his head as the building explodes behind him. Come on, man, again? Moth shouts as they get back in the car, speeding away. He glances in the back seat where Joker's henchmen are still rotting. Can we please dump the dead guy? He's starting to smell. Moth says, but they both scream in shock as the henchman suddenly sits up. Where are we? Back over in the sewers, that version of the Joker gets to his second request. Before you called me an imposter, you implied that I'm not the real Joker. I want you to take it back. Joker tells Croc, who pauses for a moment before breaking into laughter. Ha, you're funnier than the real guy. <laughs> But Croc shrugs, explaining to the Joker that no one really cares which is the real Joker. One will kill the other, and then all will go back to normal. The real one will be whichever one of you survives your little war, and that ain't gonna be you! Croc snarls as he launches forward, but Joker throws the live wire into the water, shocking Croc and knocking him out. This may come as a surprise, but I'm tougher than I look, Joker says, walking out of the sewer. Meanwhile, on the west side of Gotham, the armored truck carrying Jason Todd is suddenly hit. Both police escort bikes are taken out by wires on the road, with the police cruisers being hit by spike strips, sending them crashing to the side. Finally, a sniper round rips through one of the tires, sending the armored car rolling out of control. Elsewhere, in Chinatown, Albert Wesker sits with Scarface in a theater watching an old film. Excuse me? Is the seat taken? Joker asks as he sits down next to them. Wesker grabs a hold of Scarface and the gangster pulls a gun on the clown. You made a big mistake I coming out here, fake clown. Now you're gonna die. Scarface shouts and Joker looks at the puppet with a smile. I don't think so, fake person. Because if you shoot me, my friend will rip your friend's head off. Joker says, motioning to Grundy, who is sitting quietly eating his popcorn. Joker then puts his feet up explaining to Wesker and Scarface that Joker needs an army, and that they're going to help him. Meanwhile, at the armored car crash, the two Gotham SWAT members struggle to their feet, readying their weapons, when suddenly a voice calls out to them from the outside. This is the Gotham Fire Department. Anyone alive in there? We're coming in. If you can hear me, move away from the door. 
The voice shouts, and the cops don't believe it, readying their weapons. But Jason is up elbowing one cop in the back, knocking their weapon to the ground, before grabbing the other and strangling them until they pass out. Suddenly, the door creaks open, and Jason looks up to see Rose Wilson standing over him. Hiya, lover boy. I hope I'm not interrupting. She says, quickly breaking Jason's cuffs and getting to his feet. I have a nice spot nearby where you can lay low, she tells him, but Jason shakes his head as he collects the cop's weapons. Sounds nice, but I got work to do. Later, the Joker and Grundy head to the warehouse by the docks, where they bang on the door until Wesker and Scarface finally open up. Did you get word out that I'm looking for soldiers? Joker says as he pushes past them. Of course we did! Scarface snaps and Wesker looks embarrassed. Everyone who answered the call is right over here. Joker steps through, not impressed with the lineup. What the crap is this? He demands, whirling on Scarface. You asked me to put your name on the street to see who wanted to work with you. This is it. Sighing, Joker shrugs. I believe it was the great Kermit the Frog who said, You go to war with the army you have. I'm going to fight and win. And with that in mind, it is time. But across town, the Joker from LA has finally gotten back to Gotham. He gathered his own army of much more established Gotham rogues. He cackles as he turns to those gathered at him. We're going to find the man who claims to be me, and we're going to kill him. But over in Gotham, Old Town, Black Mask looks down at the beaten and bloody cop, demanding to know why the henchmen have begun to disappear in the city. The cop coughs up some more of his own blood, explaining that they don't know where any of the henchmen are either. Suddenly, the two goons that Black Mask does have begin to giggle, and the cops begin to laugh. Black Mask looks up in fear as the green gas begins to leak into the room, and suddenly a voice calls out over the intercom system. Attention, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We have hit some rough air, causing depressurization in the cabin. But don't worry, oxygen masks will be deployed for your safety. Black Mask whirls around as an oxygen tank drops out of the ceiling. He quickly grabs it, beginning to breathe in the safe air. But at that moment, the doors bang open and the Joker walks in dressed as a flight attendant. Hello there, Mask on Mask! What a nice look for you. <laughs> the Joker begins to pour some drinks, stepping over the bodies of the victims, explaining to Black Mask that he is upset that none of the other crime lords in Gotham are taking him seriously. You're gonna need employees to be a crime boss, Joker. I heard you can't find people to work for you. Joker glares at him. Funny, I heard the same about you. But no, I've got men. I just had to lower my standards a bit. At the waterfront, Wesker is sitting on a bench with a phone, trying to figure out where the fake Joker is hiding and where he came from. But he glances up as Scarface glances at the approaching Red Hood. What the crap are you supposed to be? He snaps, pulling a gun from inside his tiny suit and firing. Eat lad, you two get cape! But Red Hood dodges the round, rushing forward, knocking the small pistol out of the robber's hand. Red Hood pulls his pistol, firing a round into Scarface. Wesker screams as blood begins to pour out of the wound, and he clutches at the puppet and his hand. Take it easy, Wesker. It's a gut shot. As long as you get him to the wood shop quickly, he should be fine. Red Hood jokes, and he stands over the criminal menacingly. But first, you're going to tell me where I can find the Joker. But back with Black Mask, the Joker begins to walk around the room, pouring acid down the throats of the goons and the cop, and then turns back to Black Mask, demanding to know where the fake Joker is. Don't worry, I know it's not you because you were there when he shot me in the head. Joker explains, and Black Mask is shocked, remembering the three men with bags over their heads that the Joker shot. If you know it wasn't me, why don't you ask someone who does disguises? Clayface, hush. Isn't there some guy named Lookalike or something now? But Joker shakes his head, pointing out that that isn't their style and that people better start giving him answers since he's the one in the city and the fake Joker is all the way across the country. Black Mask laughs. Ha, <laughs> you don't even know. Now that's funny. He's here. He came back to Gotham. Throughout the city, the armies of the two Jokers begin to clash as they meet each other in the streets. And finally, Joker makes a call to Shockey, one of his goons left behind at the warehouse. Call everyone back and tell them to go to the warehouse! He orders, and Shockey agrees, telling the Joker some good news. One of my guys found out who the fake Joker is. No, I'm gonna tell you when you get here. I wanna see the look on your face, Shockey says before hanging up. But 20 minutes later, Red Hood, Stephanie Brown, and Rose Wilson entered the Joker's warehouse and find Shockey bleeding on the floor. 
Aw, someone had all the fun without us. Rose jokes, but something shifts in the shadows as she draws her pistol and fire. Killer's still here! She shouts, and Manhunter leaps down from the rafters, knocking Rose's pistol away. Red Hood leaps to attack her, but Stephanie stops them all. I know her! Stop! She shouts. Red Hood lowers his weapon, demanding to know what Manhunter is doing. I just got here. I was about to ask you the same thing when the other one opened fire on me. She begins to explain to the others that she has been tracking the Joker, and she thinks that he did this. That's who we're after. But he didn't do this. These are his men. I don't think we're tracking the same Joker. At that moment, they're interrupted by Steph. This one's alive! She shouts, telling the others that they're going to call an ambulance. A little while later, the ambulance arrives at Gotham Central. Shockey is rushed to surgery, where the doctors are shocked that he is even alive after the abuse his body has taken. Suddenly, the sounds of gunshots reach the OR as the doors suddenly kick open and Joker walks in waving a gun. Hello, everybody! Don't worry, I won't be long! <laughs> he aims the pistol at the doctor, explaining that he needs to ask Shockey one thing, and he leans over the body of his henchman. You said you found something! Where did the imposter come from? Who is he? He asks, leaning in close to the wounded goon. You! Shockey gasps before flatlining. Angry, the Joker begins to fire his gun and chase the doctors out of the hospital, but he stops as he passes the room of the cancer patient. How's it going? Been a while! Joker asks as he steps into the kid's room. The kid sighs, putting down his Wonder Woman comic. Okay, I guess. The kid says and the Joker nods, sitting down and telling the kid all about his troubles. The guy I've been trying to kill? Well, it looks like he might end up killing me. Maybe you can convince him that there's still some good in him and he should change. That's what the heroes do in my comics, the kid says, and the Joker shakes his head, pointing out that it's a stupid idea as he picks up the comic. Where did you learn that crap anyway? These dumb things? Joker asks as he flips through the comic, but the comic begins to tell a story of one of Joker's henchmen that was affected by the Joker gas, who began to laugh but wouldn't die. Joker brought that henchman to the Professor Pig, who couldn't figure out why the henchman wouldn't die but was able to alter his appearance so that this man looked like the Joker himself. Things were going well with two Jokers for some time, but the new Joker got a little too big for his britches. And finally, Joker met the henchman in the park. Ah, there you are. Did you kill Gaggy? Who told you to kill one of my men? Joker asks, and the new Joker stood up a serious look on his face. One of my men was acting out, giving me orders. I might have gotten a little carried away, but it's what you wouldn't have done. Joker nods his head to the others and sighs. This isn't fun anymore. We're done. The rest of the goons grab the other Joker, tying him up, putting a bag over his head. The Joker pulls a pistol out, aiming it. Such a shame. I thought you'd be useful. The Joker with the bag in his head begins to beg. I am. I am. Imagine how scared everyone will be when they realize there's two of us. But the Joker just fires his gun. The world is scared of me already. Two of me is just dumb. The gang turns to leave, and the body slumps over. But no one heard it giggle. The Joker suddenly looks up from the Wonder Woman comic he's reading by the kid's bedside. This is incredible! Comic books are magical! Of course I know who he is! I made him! <laughs> Downtown Gotham. The night janitor looks up as three men approach him. Can I help you? He asks and the three clowns peer at him as the Joker leans forward. Maybe, the Joker says quietly, turning back to his henchmen. You really think that he looks like me? He asks before he begins to check the man's teeth, and finally he pushes him away. Grab him, I guess. The thugs take the janitor out to the van and throw him in with the others. We probably have enough, right? Joker asks as he slams the door shut, the rain beginning to pour on their heads. A few blocks away, the Joker's now standing in the rain, with one of his henchmen holding an umbrella over him. This is unacceptable! How hard is it to find one deranged clown in this city? The Joker shouts at his small army. And then he turns to everyone, ordering them to keep looking, to torture whoever they need to until they find the imposter. With everyone thoroughly afraid, Joker heads back inside. Hey, you're gonna wanna see this, Killer Moth calls out, pointing at the TV. So the Joker comes over listening as the news reports of the Joker causing a subway crash in Midtown. First responders are being held back for their own safety as the Joker is still on site, 
wandering around, naked, the reporter says, and the Joker frowns at the TV. He's making it very hard for people to take me seriously. <sighs> Meanwhile, an Upper West Side manhunter leaps down from the rooftops. She looks up in the rain and sees Ravager watching her from a fire escape. You again, Ravager nods, smiling. Me again. She leaps down, handing Manhunter some documents, explaining that Red Hood would like her to check some addresses for him, that he's trying to keep his hunt off the Bat Family radar. But don't make a move without him, Ravager tells her, so Manhunter sighs, turning away. Fine, let's go. Ravager shakes her head and says that she is just the messenger. But Manhunter turns back to her. You're really good. If this goes where I think it's going, I could use you. Manhunter tells Ravager, so Rose finally relents asking one very important question. What makes you think I want to get killed by a clown? She asks as the two crime fighters head off into the rainy city. Meanwhile, in Midtown, the police are still trying to keep everyone back from the destruction that the crashed subway car has inflicted. But the Joker pushes through the cops, his army of clown henchmen at his back, and they leap into the fight, attacking the police force as Joker and Killer Moth calmly walk into the fray. You smell that? Joker asks, and Killer Moth nods. Yeah, smells like burnt hair and gasoline. But the Joker shakes his head. Yeah, but not that. It smells like victory. We're ending this tonight. Meanwhile, at the Joker's warehouse, one clown left behind to guard the place looks up in surprise as somebody comes up behind him. Boss, how'd you get here so quickly? Everything okay? The Joker giggles as he starts up his chainsaw. Everything is going perfectly, he says with a vicious sneer, and blood flies through the air as the Joker brings the chainsaw down. Behind him, his two henchmen begin to pour gasoline around the warehouse. But back over at the Midtown accident, Joker and Killer Moth look up as this Joker comes staggering out of the fire, his hair on fire and his clothing burned off. Well, that's just confusing, Joker says as he looks at his double. Some of the henchmen walk up to the Joker double, who also seems confused. That's not him, Joker notes, and they turn back to him. Yeah, well, I know it's not you, boss. This is the fake Joker. He's not really you, the henchman says with a shrug, but Joker shakes his head. That's my point. That's not the fake Joker. Killer Moth moves forward, telling him that he can't get a hold of anyone that left back at the warehouse and that someone just spotted the imposter at a hardware store in Chinatown. This particular fake Joker staggers falling to the ground with the henchman beginning to gather around him. Hey, boss, is this dead guy supposed to be making a weird buzzing sound? The henchman asks, and Joker shakes his head, looking at Killer Moth. Probably not. I get it now. This is funny. Killer Moth. Time to make like a moth, Joker says. So Killer Moth's eyes widen as he grabs the Joker, pulling them both into the air as the fake burning Joker suddenly explodes beneath them, killing all of the henchmen gathered around. Sorry, boys. We got to get to Chinatown. But Killer Moth isn't used to flying two fully grown men. Stop wiggling. You're too heavy. I can't fly with this much weight, the Killer Moth says, shouting as the Joker keeps swinging beneath him. I'll have you know that I have very thin bones. <laughs> but they both slam into a building, falling to the ground, landing in a dumpster. Nice work. Meanwhile, over in Old City, Manhunter kicks open a door to another warehouse, and she moves through the darkness until she finds a bloody shoe. Huh, she whispers as she leans down, but a voice calls out to her from the shadows, so she whirls around with her electric staff at the ready. You're late. Your ads say that if you're not here in 30 minutes, my dinner is free. The other Joker giggles as he steps into the light Manhunter preparing herself for the fight. Did you actually think you could get away from me, Joker? The Joker pauses, staring at her for a moment. I've actually never thought about you at all. Who are you? He asks, and Manhunter leaps at him, reminding the Joker that he almost killed her back in L.A., but the Joker easily dodges her attack. Oh, you're from L.A.? That explains the delusions of self-importance telling her that he hasn't been there for a very long time, and he pulls out a hatchet, taking a slice at her head. She easily dodges, telling him to stop lying, but that's when one of Joker's henchmen grabs her from behind. Meanwhile, back over with the other Joker and Killer Moth, they've now arrived at a hardware store in Chinatown. Joker walks up to the henchmen that have taken up positions outside, ordering them to head inside. Go in there and bring him out. I'll wait here for no particular reason. Joker says, and the clowns head inside with the killer Moth staying by Joker's side. If you stay outside, I stay outside, Moth says with a nod. 
Suddenly, the building explodes, throwing them both to the ground. Flaming clown masks and oversized shoes falling to the ground around them as Joker struggles to look at the burning building. Ha! That's a good one! <laughs> Back at the warehouse, Manhunter has gotten back to her feet, realizing that this Joker has no idea who she is. So it's true. You're really not the Joker I was looking for. I didn't believe Red Hood when he told me that there were two of you. The Joker nods, smiling. Oh yes, Jason is such a smart little boy, isn't he? He raises his hatchet, apologizing for not being able to play with her anymore. I'm in the middle of a very big personal vendetta. I'm sorry whatever your name is, but I'm sure they'll build a statue to you or something. He says as he prepares to kill her with his hatchet, but that's when a gunshot echoes through the rafters and the Joker falls, a round piercing his shoulder. He whirls around, retreating into the shadows as he cuts power to the building. No, it's too soon. Ravager leaps down to join Manhunter, apologizing for being late. But as the two prepare for their fight, a door to the warehouse opens up, revealing a horde of giggling Jokers. The two women stare in horror as the horde of Jokers stumble towards them, laughing, begging for help. I got the ones on the left, Ravager says as she readies her blade, but Manhunter shakes her head. These men have been poisoned. We need to get them help. Ravager drops into a combat stance, but pauses when she hears a strange noise. What's that buzzing? Outside, Mr. Waffles has trailed the two heroes to the warehouse. He holds up his phone, telling the others to get to him quickly. That's when the warehouse explodes behind him, throwing him to the ground. And as he struggles up, he sees his cell phone was smashed by a big purple shoe. You shouldn't spy on people, the Joker says with a smile, raising his hatchet as he looks down at the clown henchman. Wait, I know you, he says as he cocks his head to the side and Mr. Waffles nods. Yeah, we work together. Joker nods, remembering that Mr. Waffles used to be friends with John Keeser before he was turned into a Joker double. The Joker grins viciously as he leans to Mr. Waffles. And now my loyal henchman, Mr. Waffles works with me against me. What do you have to say for yourself? The Joker growls, but Mr. Waffles shakes his head, pointing a shaky finger. No, you're John Keeser. The Joker rears back, surprise on his face. No, that's not right. That can't be right. I'm the Joker. I thought you knew. I'm sorry, John. Mr. Waffle says as the rain continues to pour, lightning crashing over their heads, as we finally reveal which Joker is the fake Joker. A little bit of time passes. The Gotham War happens in between these two issues. It's now nighttime in Gotham City, and transformed by Batman to be afraid at all times, Jason Todd is sitting on a park bench. His head bowed as his body still fights the fear that Batman put inside of him, stopping him from being Red Hood. And a voice calls out from the distance. Hello, Jason. You look poorly. The Joker double says as he walks out of the darkness, fear overtaking Jason as he stands, and he is surrounded by the Joker's goons. No, it's you, he shouts out, but the Joker double looks sad. People keep saying that, but no, it's not true. Jason tries to run, but Grundy grabs him. Still skittish, I see, my poor little vigilante. What did he do to you? Joker then draws a pistol, stepping forward, promising to fix Jason, as long as he helps him with a project. He fires a puff of Joker toxin into the young man's face, and Grundy drops him. You won't be scared anymore, the Joker double promises. And then he smiles. Well, you might be scared, but you'll think it's funny, Joker double admits as Jason looks up with a smile on his face. What did you do to me? He asks, and Joker explains that he gave him a small amount of Joker toxin that should counter whatever Batman has done to him. Just enough to bring you to your psychotic alter ego. The Joker then explains that he needs Jason's help to take out the Joker. I'm going to give you what you always wanted. I'm going to let you kill the real Joker, the Joker double says with a smile. Jason looks confused, and the fake Joker admits that he has learned that he isn't the real Joker after all. I'm just a sad victim of his madness, and I want revenge, just like you. But you're still a delusional murderous maniac, Jason points out, and the fake Joker nods. Which is why I think we're going to hit it off wonderfully! <laughs> Jason then looks at the fake Joker's group and sees the young cancer patient that the Joker met in the hospital. He looks back to the Joker, telling him that he won't do anything to endanger a kid. So Joker double smiles, leaning over the young Albert. 
Perhaps we can find a way to kill two birds with one stone. A short time later, 18 miles north of Gotham, Jason is screeching through the streets on his motorcycle, dragging a clown goon behind him. With the roar of the engine, the Batmobile suddenly gets behind him. Red Hood races into a warehouse, ditching his motorcycle as Batman follows, but as the bat rounds the corner, he's shocked to find Ravager pulling off Red Hood's jacket. She smiles nervously, pulling young Albert close to her. Hiya, sorry about the whole chase. Jason said that you'd know what to do with this kid. Batman narrows his eyes as he looks at her. Where is he? 35 miles south of Gotham, the fake Joker is laughing as he blows a train horn, pushing the speed to full. One of his goons leans over his shoulder, asking if Red Hood knows about them blowing up Gotham Central with the train. Fake Joker shrugs, blowing the horn again. I may have left out some details for our vigilante, but I'm sure it's going to be fine. The goons keep asking questions whether the real Joker is going to be able to find them. I left him clues that he can't miss. The fake Joker says with a laugh, and one of them finally looks out the window and points at the massive Joker blimp lowering towards them from the night sky. Boss, I think he found us! The goon calls out, and the fake Joker laughs as he leans out the window, tipping his conductor's hat. Well played, real me! Well played! He shouts with glee, and on board the blimp, the real Joker looks down with a smile. He has my style! You have to give him that! The armies of the two Jokers begin to clash over the train, and the Joker slides down a rope onto the engine car. The train passes over a cliffside, so Red Hood revs the engine of his motorbike, leaping off into the night landing on the train. No longer gripped by fear, using Joker toxin as his fuel, he draws his guns and begins to fire, not worrying about which Joker goons he hits. In the engine car, Joker finally kicks through the door, drawing his knife, rushing at the fake. Honey, I'm home! <laughs> he laughs as he drives his blade into the fake's shoulder. So glad you can make it. It's been so long, the fake says with a smile. The two continue to trade blows, their knives slashing through pale skin. But the Joker's smile finally fades. I never should have made you. But suddenly there's a pistol pushing into the back of his head and the fake smiles. You shouldn't have made either of us, Red Hood says as he cocks the pistol. The Joker stands slowly, Jason looking at the fake. What now? The fake shrugs his shoulders. Well, I didn't have it all planned out. I thought we would kill him and eat him to take all of his powers. The fake says with a smile and Jason shakes his head. We gotta stop the train and go somewhere isolated so we can take our time with him. But the fake shakes his head, explaining that he's actually disabled the brakes on the train and that they're going to crash into Gotham Central and blow up the train. And then they're going to blanket the city in a cloud of Joker gas. Jason whirls around on the fake, aiming the pistol at him. You're as insane as he is! The fake nods, smiling. Yeah, that was kind of the point. The real Joker suddenly whirls around, knocking Red Hood's pistol away, kicking him out the door. Bye-bye! He says with glee, as the fake moves quickly, locking the door so that Jason can't get back in. And that's when the two Jokers turn on each other, both smiling. Quick thinking with the door. Well done, the Joker says. But the fake shakes his head. No, it was all you with the lunch. I was scared. Then they both stare at each other again before leaping at each other with their knives. I'll kill you! They both shout as they continue to cut and stab. Outside, Jason suddenly sees Killer Moth flying by, so he leaps on the criminal, ripping off the wings and putting them on his own back, flying back up to the blimp overhead. In the engine car, the two Jokers are continuing their battle until the real one demands to know how the fake planned on escaping. I did have an emergency escape, just in case. The fake gasps as the Joker's hands wrap around his throat. On the blimp, Jason crashes through the window, guns trained on the pilot. Stop the train! He snaps, but the pilot asks how, explaining that if he blows it up, the gas will still blank at the city. Useless. He snaps, firing a bullet, killing the pilot. He then straps himself into the pilot's seat, finally getting on the Bat Family radio, asking for help. Batman's voice reaches him, and Jason explains the situation. So Batman explains that he's on his way, but it's going to be a minute. Someone distracted him across town. He tells Jason that if he blows up the tanks, some of the gas will still reach the city. Same if he dumps it into the river. So Jason's mind begins to race as he begins to aim at the blimp at the train. What about both? There's a long pause before Batman asks, What do you mean? Back on the train, the two Jokers finally stopped fighting, the real Joker suggesting that they both escape the train and then just go their separate ways. As long as the fake leaves Gotham, he can be the Joker somewhere else. And we're equals? Both of us get to be the Joker? Joker nods, holding out his hand. 
Sure, it's all one of us gets bored and kills the other. <laughs> Both jokers throw their knives and head for the door, the fake looking up as the blimp comes at barreling towards him. That boy really, really hates you. Joker nods, smiling. I know! Isn't it wonderful? He says before they both leap from the train, crashing into the river below. Behind them, the blimp slams into the train, blowing everything up in a massive fireball. The fire rains from the sky into the river below, but the Joker suddenly comes up for air, his hair burnt to a crisp on his head. He gasps for air, the other one breaking the surface with a knife in his hand. He grabs the first Joker and pulls them both under. It's 10 minutes later that Ravager arrives at the bridge, looking down into the water for some sign of Jason. No, 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 she gasps before leaping off the bridge into the water. Jason, you stupid idiot! She finds him there amongst the seemingly endless corpses of Joker goons and pulls him to the shore. You dumb boy! If you're dead, I swear we're gonna bring you back to life and kill you myself! She hisses as she rips off her mask and begins to perform CPR. After a moment, Jason begins to cough up water, gasping for air, and they both collapse on the beach. Am I dead? Despite your best efforts, not yet. Down the river, various goons of the Joker have gathered and they're arguing with each other, but it's Grundy who points at the water. Look, not dead. The large zombie grunts, and Joker suddenly stands up in the shallows, his hair and his clothing burnt off, stab wounds littering his body. Mr. Joker, is that you? Arnold Wesker calls out, but Killer Moth waves him away. Back off, ventriloquist. I think that's our guy. Right, boss? The Joker nods, walking forward, demanding his men get the car. The killer moth asks, Where's the other Joker, and which one are you? The Joker laughs as he raises his hand out of the water, revealing the severed head of the other Joker. Oh, him? We don't have to worry about him anymore, he says before stepping out of the water and walking towards the car. As for who I am, I'm the Joker. <laughs> Thank you for watching today's episode of Full Story, where we take stuff from Comic Story and combine it into a giant video so that you can enjoy it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.